Hi, my name is Jaden and I'm 42 years old. I live in uh, the Los Angeles, California area. And I have never done a YouTube video before. This is a, a first for me, I'm excited, but also just not sure how it's gonna go. So just bear with me. Um, I have uh, been diagnosed with craniocervical instability. Um, which is probably why you're watching this video. Um, it's a problem with the upper cervical spine or the upper neck, um, basically between the top vertebrae of the neck and the head. And the way I tell my friends and um, whatnot to simplify this condition is that my head is not on tight, um, which is kind of how it feels as well. It's my symptoms are mostly uh, pain, uh, particularly neck pain and head pain in what's called the occipital area, which is the, the back of your head and the, the bottom portion of the back of your head. And I also have occipital neuralgia, which is nerve pain, um, peripheral nerve pain that comes up and it runs sort of right up the back of your head. Um, the nerve kind of branches out like a, like a tree branch. So you get these sort of little tingling pain sensations in the back of your scalp. Um, I've been told by uh, one, of the, one of the CCI neurosurgeons uh, that I'm one of the lucky ones uh, because I just have pain. Um, I don't know how lucky that makes me feel, but um, there are a lot of other symptoms that are associated with craniocervical instability, or I'm gonna call it CCI from now on. Um, most of you probably already use that acronym. <laughs> Um, but yeah, there are many other symptoms, uh, people with vision issues, um, other issues or irregular heart rate, um, brain fog, just unable to think and to be able to function very well. Um, and, and a whole host of other, uh, what, what sometimes are called neurological symptoms. Um, and I don't have any of those, which is a bit of a mystery to me. Um, but I do have. Um, the two, the top two symptoms, which are headache and neck pain. Um, if you believe you have CCI and you have a headache and neck pain, it's probably going to take you a while to get a diagnosis because neck pain is a very common symptom, uh, can come from a lot of things and headaches are also a very common symptom. Um, so it, from, in my case, it took about 10 years to get a diagnosis. Um, that I actually uh, think is believable. <laughs> I've had a few different uh, looser diagnoses over the years um, and some people that have pointed me in the direction of CCI but weren't too sure um, just because I have a bit of I'm a bit of an edge case. So anyway, so that's a little bit about me and why I'm here and I want to talk about what I would like to do uh, with some YouTube videos. Um, and basically that is to just tell the story of what it's like to live with CCI. Um, I've been researching it for at least five years since I've become aware of it. And I found that there's a lot of content available on the treatment and the diagnosis of CCI. Um, there's a lot of stuff about stem cells and peptides and regenerative medicine and, and all the different specialty chiropractic techniques. And, and I'll get into all of that, I'm sure, but um, there's a lot of emphasis on treating it uh, because that's what, you know, what sells, right? Like people are selling treatments um, to this and, and I think it's great. And I think that some of them help people, um, some more than others, and some people are more helpable than other people. And uh, so it's kind of, um, it's a very individual, case by case basis um, thing. Uh, and diagnosis, I'm not a medical professional whatsoever. I work in tech. Uh, so I'm not here to diagnose you or to second guess the diagnosis you have. That's not why I'm here. Um, there's a lot of uh, material you can look into uh, online that talks about the diagnosis and the imaging and the different criteria used by different um, facets of the medical um, system. So, but what I do want to talk about and what I'd like to use this series of videos to do is to 
um, kind of fill in uh, a void that I believe is is there um, and help with talking about um, just living with CCI and adapting to the symptoms um, and just telling, you know, what my experience has been. And I, I will put it out there that I, I don't have all of the symptoms. So there are going to be people that are going to be like, well, that works for you, but it'll never work for me. And, and um, that I, I get that. And, and I, I'm not discounting uh, anyone else's story or experiences. I just here to share my own and, um, take what you will from it. If it's helpful, great. If it's not, then ignore me. <laughs> um, so I guess I'll, I think with this episode, um, I'm doing this very spontaneously, as you can probably tell. So I don't have a, I don't have an agenda or anything of all. But I think what I'm going to do with this episode is just tell you a little bit about my history um, and sort of how all this started. And then in later episodes, I will get into, um, you know, living with CCI and ultimately like the, the path that I've chosen um, to try and, you know, move on with my life um, with a CCI diagnosis and CCI symptoms. So with that, I'll, um, I guess, start off by, by talking about the beginning of it. And it really, in my case, um, uh, it's very, it's somewhat unusual because I did not have a, a trauma that I know of. Um, and I think if I had had a trauma that was significant enough to cause CCI, I would have, I would have been in pain or I would, you know, I would have had some kind of, you know, months or weeks of, of, uh, agony. Uh, but I had no trauma. I had no car accident. I did not have a big fall or have a sports injury or, you know, get in a fight or there was nothing like that at all in my history. So no trauma. Um, I also now know that I do not have Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, which is the next most sort of common cause of CCI. And that's a syndrome that is uh, associated with looser ligaments and hypermobility of joints. Um, it's possible that I'm on what is called the hypermobility spectrum. My physical therapist has told me that I probably am. Um, so if I had to guess, uh, I would say that I probably have some genetic um, hypermobility that has led to my CCI simply because I have no explainable trauma and the ligaments of the upper neck joint shouldn't just fall apart for no reason. So I probably have some kind of genetic um, predisposition for this uh, condition. Um, but anyways, just going to how it sort of came about. Uh, I was um, actually living near the beach uh, uh, 10 years ago. I was in my early 30s, uh, living the California dream. As they say, I had moved here from Canada uh, at age 30 and um, was doing quite well and just trying to find my way in LA. I didn't know very many people. I was trying to get involved in things. And I, I started um, doing some activity, uh, physical activity. So I was in running. I also did some circuit training with uh, Nike. There was a thing called Nike Train Club in Santa Monica. It was a pretty cool thing to do because we got to to work out with some you know famous people sometimes and um, get to go to some cool, uh, you know, hidden away places in the city. Like, did a workout on the rooftop of a building downtown once. And so it was really quite a neat time. Uh, and I was starting to enjoy um, my athletic sort of side, which as a teenager was really not that significant. I was kind of overweight as a kid. So um, I really didn't become more um, involved in like sports and all that until I was a bit older. So anyways, I, yeah, so I was basically, I was uh, um, doing really well. I was, you know, in great health and uh, getting involved in, in more, you know, more physical stuff. I had a desk job as well. So uh, my ergonomics basically sucked. Um, I'll, I'll put that out there and had bad posture. I had forward head, which is where you kind of, you know, you lean into the monitor and your, your neck is kind of not in the right alignment. Um, so I was doing all the wrong things in my 20s and 30s, I'll admit. Um, which, you know, probably didn't help, uh, 
with, with everything that was about to happen to me. Um, anyways, I did remember in 2013 that, so that's 10 years ago today, basically, um, I made a doctor's appointment, which is something I had never really done before. Like I'd gone before to like urgent care or something. If I like, you know, had something, you know, like a, uh, cold that would never go away. Or if I, you know, hurt myself in some way, I, you know, but I'd never actually called and be like, you know, I am, um, calling just to go see a doctor because I think there's something wrong with me. So, um, so anyway, so I went to this appointment and I had sort of a, uh, what we call down here, the, you know, Obamacare physical, it was, a, it's a free, uh, holistic kind of medical visit you can do every year. Um, that's designed to be like preventative. So they, they, you know, they do the standard blood tests and all of that. So anyways, they did all that and they, you know, there's kind of an interview component with the doctor where they're like, you know, how are things going? Like, and I'm like, you know, like I have a headache, um, like all the time and I don't think it's very normal. It, it's gets a little bit better when I'm, um, you know, physically active and my mind is kind of distracted from the headache. I probably always there, but it's definitely a problem when I'm trying to focus on things. And so, so yeah, I basically went in you know, 10 years ago to the doctor for a reason, because I had headaches all the time and I'm talking all the time. Like there was no time when I did not have a headache. Um, so, uh, the doctor was kind of like, oh, well, that's not good. We, we don't support people having headaches all the time. Um, so he told me to take Tylenol and keep, keep a headache journal and kind of brush me off. Um, maybe that's a bit too strong. I mean, he did want to see me again and, you know, but he, he basically did, they didn't know what to do with me. And I, I wasn't very impressed. Um, so I kind of withdrew from, um, the mainstream medical system thinking like, well, I'm not interested in taking Tylenol all day, every day for the rest of my life. And I also thought the headache journal was just kind of something to placate me. So I was like, I'm, I'm not doing that. <laughs> um, although I later ended up doing one and I'll tell you in a future episode, I had to do one for a neurologist, but, but for this guy, I was like, no, I'm not doing a headache journal for you, dude. Uh, and I'm also not going to make another appointment. I, you know, I'll see how the blood work is. And, but if they basically, they, they said I was in perfect health and my heart rate was even lower than normal because I was athletic, uh, and there was nothing wrong with me. So, um, so at that point I was like, okay, well, I really don't like these headaches. And I started to think about other ways I could try to address this. Um, and one of the first things I did was I said, well, maybe I need to stop drinking like all together because I wasn't drinking a lot, but I'll admit, um, it was something that, uh, had, I had not done as much in my younger years. It's just not as much in the culture in Canada where I'm from. Um, but when I moved down here, it's like people are, it's urban life, I guess is maybe what it is. There's people drinking like every day after work and it was a big thing. Um, so I cut out drinking just to see like, okay, maybe this will fix it. And if it does like great problem solved, but, I did that and I really didn't notice any difference. Um, I then tried some uh, massage therapy, uh, which, you know, was really nice. It's pretty expensive, um, but it was only temporary. Like it, it made me feel better after the appointment for maybe like a few hours and then everything would kind of come back again. Um, so I was like, well, I don't really want to spend like $150 on a massage. If it's only going to work for two hours. Um, and you know, it's nice to lay there on the table and get a massage, but like, I'm really not getting the, any lasting benefit. So, uh, I tried some chiropractic, um, which I was really hesitant about. Again, it's another cultural thing. Um, in Canada, um, chiropractors are seen as a little bit more alternative and kind of, you know, on the edge of, of science. Um, and in the U S like they're celebrated. I mean, I think they have, um, a much bigger kind of, uh, reputation here. And a lot of people go to chiropractors and see them as, 
you know, saviors and all of that. So I'm like, okay, well, I, I should be an open-minded guy. And, you know, I researched some chiropractors and I went to a chiropractor and had my back and my neck adjusted uh, for the first time in my life. Um, And it felt really good. Like it, I was like, wow, okay. Now I, now I know what everyone's talking about. Like this, you know, this stuff is a uh, kind of nice. Um, so that actually I thought helped me more than massage therapy, uh, especially the neck adjustment. Um, but also wasn't very durable. And when I say durable, just like it didn't last. Um, so my headaches came back and so the chiropractor solution was, you know, well, just, you know, if you feel better for three days, then come every three days and pay me, you know, whatever. And if you, if you keep watching these videos, you're, you're going to get the impression that I'm pretty cheap and stingy because I am like, I, I don't like just spending my money on going back over and over and over again to do therapy. That's not really helping me. So, um, so yeah, I kind of, I, I, honored the chiropractor's wishes for a little while. And then I was like, yeah, I'm kind of tired of paying for this because I'm a healthy guy. I try to eat well. I'm not drinking. I'm like, I'm doing all the right things. And like, why should I have to come every, you know, why should I have to come like twice a week to be adjusted? Um, You know, so, you know, I, like, I just didn't, I I didn't like the idea of it. So I I kind of stopped going to that. So anyway, so this is all sort of a period of a a couple of years when I would describe my pain as being very manageable. So I could still work very easily. I mean, I I did have to take breaks. Um, I had to really work on my posture. So that actually, that is one of the things the chiropractor really kind of, um, you know, read me the riot act on posture and she got me to, you know, properly have my monitor at the right height and, you know, encouraged me to get a new chair. And so like, so that to her credit, like there were, there were some things that I I learned from the chiropractor that the regular medical doctor didn't even think about. Uh, So I worked a lot on my posture. I used a lot of topicals to help with the muscle pain in the back of my head. And in uh, the suboccipital area was kind of where I had most of the muscle pain, which is really common for CCI, as I later found out. Um, the suboccipital area is basically the, the band of muscles at the bottom of the skull um, that sort of hold the, like it, it controls sort of the up down of, of your, your head, the nodding motion. So, yeah, a lot of uh, uh, menthol based, you know, topical uh, rubs and things that could help kind of calm the muscles and the nerves. And, um, and I, yeah, I started doing yoga. I started trying to, um, to go to the gym and, and just get, get stronger as well. Uh, I was doing some core training with, with TRX that had just sort of become really popular at that time. So, um, so yeah, it was, I was managing and, um, Anyways, I, I guess the next thing that happened to me uh, is that I got really into running, um, which in hindsight was not a good thing, um, although I enjoyed it and it, it definitely offered me some amazing life experiences. It was, I suspect, very a very bad decision for somebody that um, had CCI and didn't know it. Uh, so I had moved to San Diego, uh, in 2014. Um, and I also, it was the same as LA. Like I didn't know anyone. I was trying to find my way. And and so I ended up getting into running clubs, uh, because I had done some running with Nike in LA and it's like, okay, I know how to run. I can keep up with, you know, I can actually be usually in the, one of the higher cohorts of of runners, uh, adult runners, uh, kind of weekend warrior type people. So I started running and I met people and it was great. I mean, San Diego uh, is an awesome place to be a runner. Um, There's just so many beautiful places that I saw um, going and meeting running clubs um, at, you know, routes that they already had, you know, other people had kind of planned out the routes. And then I got to see these like amazing places. 
uh, coastal areas, mountains. Um, anyway, so running in San Diego was like the best thing I ever did. And I met so many great people doing it. And it was just, I really felt like I was at the pinnacle of, well, not the time, the pinnacle, but like I, it was the pinnacle of my sort of life to date because I did feel like I was managing the symptoms that I had. Um, I was as athletic as I'd ever been in my whole life. Um, remember saying I was, I was an overweight teenager, so I was not very athletic as a teenager. Um, so yeah, so that, so that running period of my life was good. What happened though, is I got, um, talked into running some, uh, half marathons, um, which I did quite well at. And then I got talked into running some full marathons, which I did pretty well at. And then I qualified to run the Boston Marathon, which if anyone here is a runner, it's extremely hard to get into. Um, it's the sort of one of the most famous marathons. I think, I believe it's the oldest marathon um, that's still running. Um, so yeah, so here I am like with CCI, not realizing I had CCI, but I'm running like 60 miles a week for four months or five months, like training for the Boston Marathon. And, and I'm taking it really seriously because I want to do well. Like I'm not just going to run this to finish it. I want to actually, you know, I want to do as well as I can. And I knew that I was capable of it. So I really pushed myself. And uh, when I sort of finished the marathon, uh, I, I should back up a bit. So I knew even before I ran the Boston Marathon that I had a neck problem. So I started to notice uh, crepitus, which is kind of a, a popping and grinding sound in your joints. And it's really common, like in, in knuckles and things, people can kind of crack them. And so doctors generally say crepitus is, oh, it's harmless. It's not pathological. It doesn't mean you have a condition or a disease or something. But I had a lot of noise happening in my upper neck and it was associated with pain. Um, but I was still managing. So I carried on and I did really want to, I had put all the work into qualifying for, for Boston. So I was like, okay, I'm going to suck it up and, and do it. And, and I, um, I had been doing uh, massage therapy with a really good deep tissue guy uh, who worked with a lot of runners and that allowed me to kind of survive training for my last marathon uh, because it was pretty rough. Um, I really pushed myself and, um, you know, I guess maybe I regret it now, but it's like hindsight is twenty twenty. So, but yeah, I, I was able to kind of manage all of that and did quite well in the marathon um it was a funny year because it it was one of the years that um uh it poured rain basically the entire marathon <laughs> so um a lot of people did not do very well especially people that were really lean uh, i was fortunate that i have more body fat than most runners and i did quite well i even maybe better than i expected so um so anyway, so I finished in, I think, the top 10% of, of the race, which I, I was happy with. I was, you know, uh, uh, running at a at 3.0, I think I was 3.07 or something like that. So, you know, three-hour marathon. It's pretty good. Um, it's not, you know, it's not elite or anything like that, but it's, it's, a, it's a decent marathon for somebody in their late 30s. Uh, anyways, uh, I'll kind of wrap this up and... So basically when I realized like, okay, I need to start taking this seriously um, was when I finished the marathon, I sort of said, okay, I need to um, listen to my body and figure out like what's going on because there's definitely something, the headaches, the neck pain, the joint issues in the upper neck like those are not normal and they're not running injuries. Like runners don't have these kinds of injuries, no matter how bad their technique is. Runners get bad knees or uh, plantar fasciitis in their feet or, you know, whatever, but they don't get upper neck joint uh, issues. 
So, um, so yeah, at that point I, I decided like, okay, I'm going to go back to the doctor. Um, after all those years of, of being scared off by the, the Tylenol guy, uh, the Tylenol salesman, as I, as I call him to my, but I went back to the doctor and I'm like, okay, here's my, here's my situation. I've done all of these conservative things. I've, you know, I worked with personal trainers to try and strengthen it. I've done the chiropractic, I've done massage. I've tried even some of the more obscure things like Feldenkrais and, um, and yeah, I've learned kind of what it is. I knew that it was, a, there was a nerve pain component. And so I kind of went fairly educated and the doctor listened and was like, okay, so we'll get you an X-ray and, you know, maybe get you an MRI if, you know, if we can justify it. And I, I was sort of like, well, I was hoping for an MRI, but I, I had the X-ray. Um, it didn't really show anything, but it did show I had some, um, some disc degeneration lower in my neck, which is extremely common that C5, six, I have a, a small disc bulge. So he's like, yep, let's get the MRI. Um, got the MRI and the MRI is like, yep, basically normal neck. It's pretty straight. Another CCI symptom. <laughs> um, I have a perfectly straight neck basically, or a military neck, um, which, you know, it's not, doesn't just mean it's CCI. Like it could just be, I have bad posture or just genetically kind of like that. It usually is more of a, a environmental thing or postural kind of thing. But yeah, I have a straight neck rather than a curved neck. And um, I had some, you know, some disc um, loss, uh, loss of disc height at five, six. Um, but that was about it. So it was kind of a mystery because I was pretty sure that my symptoms were upper cervical. And yet the MRI was showing like the only issue that I could possibly have that in imaging was um, down at five, six, which would cause me problems in my fingers and you know down my arms and stuff, which I had not, I didn't have any pain in my arms. I didn't have any loss of motor function or anything like that. So, so it, getting the imaging was kind of a bit of a red herring um, that sent me off uh, on a few different wild goose chases. Um, but, but yeah, that's, that's kind of was the beginning of my journey uh, towards a CCI diagnosis. So that I, I was 2018 when I got that MRI. Uh, and um, I it wasn't until 2022 uh, that I got the CCI diagnosis. So I think with the next episode, I'm going to fill in um, the gap from kind of first declaring that I have a problem <laughs> uh, with my neck um, to uh, actually being diagnosed properly and starting to get treated. And um, so I'll kind of fill in that gap, I think in the next episode. And then, um, you know, I just to, I guess, cut to the chase a little bit, but I, I've, at this point, um, it's 2023 now, <laughs> I have the diagnosis, I have done pretty much all of the available treatment and none of it has worked. So um, yeah, the, the sort of, sad end to my story, but it's not really the end because life goes on, uh, is that, yeah, I don't really have a treatable form of CCI. So uh, unless I want to do a uh, draconian fusion, which some people need, I, I, I don't, I don't um, want to uh, um, belittle anyone that gets a CCI fusion, but uh, I am high functioning and I, I can live with CCI and, and that's what I want to try and tell the story of in, in these videos. Um, not everyone is as lucky as me. There are people that have way worse symptoms um, and people, certainly people that get very, very discouraged by it. And so I'm hoping that with um, producing these videos that I can um, share my story and, and maybe it'll help some people that are like me and can make a choice to, to kind of live with it. And, and rather than, you know, exhausting your entire savings on, on experimental treatments and which, you know, I, I tried quite a bit of, um, it's a choice we all have to make is, do you want to try to keep treating it over and over and over again? Or, or, or do you get to a point where it's time to, um, to adjust and just say, this is the way it is. And here's what I can do. Here's what I can't do. And, um, there aren't very many things that I can't do. Uh, but I usually pay for them if I, 
decided to do it. <laughs> so I guess, yeah, I, I do feel I am one of the lucky people um, of, among the CCI population because I'm not, um, you know, my, my life is definitely not over and it's just different. It's very different than the life that I had when I was running marathons and I was, you know, at the peak of physical health and uh, had a, a great social life. And I don't have any of that now, <laughs> but I still have a lot uh, to be thankful for. So that's, that's what I want to get to. Uh, bear with me. It's going to be a couple more of these uh, until we're at that point. Um, and then I can just talk at that point about, you know, some of the things I've, I've done that may, you know, may help, may help you and, um, and what you're going through. So, um, so yeah, so thanks for watching. If you're still here, I, you know, thank you. Uh, and I hope that, um, please leave uh, comments and like the video, uh, because it'll help uh, more people find it. And, uh, I'm happy to, um, to see what you have to say. And if you'd like to, to see me answer anything specific, or you have questions about what I've talked about, or I'm wrong, if you want to call me out on, you know, misinformation or whatever, I, I'm, trust me, I'm not trying to do that. But if I've said something that's inaccurate, please call me out on it and I can correct it in a future video. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's it for this one. Uh, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.